Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to Sports Spectrum, everybody. Today's episode is sponsored by Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. And I, I say it often, but think about those words, child development ministry, an opportunity to give a child hope and release them from poverty, doing it all through the lens of Jesus Christ. That's what compassion is about. And you and I can partner together and make that a reality with compassion. It's $38 a month, tax deductible, but an opportunity for you to help release a child from poverty with the essential things that every children needs, every children deserves, food, education, medical care, training for vocations, for work, That's what it's about through Compassion International. Check out the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Pray about it and consider sponsoring a child today. Really excited to welcome Jeremiah Trotter, the former NFL linebacker, longtime Philadelphia Eagles linebacker to the podcast. He was nicknamed the Axeman when he played, wore number 54 with the Eagles, and a longtime favorite of those crazy, rabid Philadelphia Eagle fans. He was selected in the third round of the 1998 NFL Draft, 72nd overall, from the College of Stephen F. Austin. Not exactly a hub for NFL players coming into the league, but Trot made it through. He tells a great story about how he probably should have been cut after his rookie year and how much of a struggle it was for him to acclimate himself into the NFL, but he played eight of his 11 NFL seasons with those Philadelphia Eagles, 1998 to 2001. Then he signed a free agent deal with the Redskins and played two years there, then came back to Philadelphia in 2004 to 2006. And that 2004 season, of course, was the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles, making it all the way to Super Bowl 39 in Jacksonville against the New England Patriots, a game that ended in New England, winning by three points, 24-21 over Philadelphia, and then played one more season with the Buccaneers in 2007 and stepped away from the game. He sat out in 2008, and then he gets a call, and he's back in 2009, plays one last season with the Eagles. As Trot will tell you on the podcast, he gets it out of his system and then knew it was time to retire. His career saw him make the Pro Bowl four times. He was a two-time All-Pro and in 2016 was named to the Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Fame. Trot is a great dude. I've gotten the opportunity to know him over the last 10 years or so with my time at ESPN and just an awesome dude. Great connecting with him, great catching up with him, and I know you'll love his story here on Sports Spectrum. Take a listen. Jeremiah, welcome to the show. Appreciate it, man. How you been? Trot, I've been great, and it's good to hear your voice. It's great to connect with you again. Gosh, it's probably been at least seven or eight years since we last connected back back in the old ESPN days, so it's good to reconnect here. And I can't believe that you've been out of the game now. I saw this. 2009 was your last year. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So That's crazy, e- right? Ten, ten years. Ten years. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah, it's crazy, so man. So you're 42 now, and it's been 10 years. How much – do you miss playing? Do you still miss playing? I know the body's probably saying, no, I don't miss it at all. But do you miss it? I don't miss it one iota. Is that right? Yeah, I, I don't miss it at all. I mean, uh, there's certain parts about the game you miss. You miss the camaraderie with your teammates. Um, you know, being in a locker room. I mean, obviously, every NFL tell you they miss paychecks or whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, you know, you miss game day, uh, coming out of the tunnel, you know, being in the huddle with the guys, but you don't miss, you know, beating your body up and just the things you have to go through just to get to game day. Well, the you interesting know, and, thing and, with your your career too was it, you didn't play in two thousand eight, so you thought probably you might have been done in twelve years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I set out a year. I went to Tampa for a year. I set out the following year. Needed surgery, went and had surgery, came back and played one year. And I got it out of my system. And after that, man, I was I knew I was done. You just knew it. 
Yeah, I knew I was done. Yeah, the body was, told I, I you, the mind told you, or all of it? No, told you? the body was still good. Um, okay. Uh, the body was still good. I think what happened, I was, I was working out one day. I was training outside. And in the middle of my workout, I just stopped and I was like, yo, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? And I've always said, <clears throat> when, when I, I don't, when I no longer desire to, to train and work out and do what it takes to stay in shape, it's time to walk away from the game. Yeah. And uh, my, I remember my agent had called me and um, told me it was a couple teams that, that wanted to bring me in. And I just told him, I said, listen, I'm done, man. I said, I don't have, I, I no longer have the desire to, to, to work out or keep myself in shape. And it was getting too hard. It was, I mean, you get older, it gets, when you're younger, you younger, you get out there. I see these guys out there running now. I'm like, man, I used to do that. But um, <clears throat> when you get older, it's your body's different. It, it reacts different. It, it takes so much to stay in shape. It's it's harder and harder and harder just to stay in shape, you know. And, and I had I no longer had desire. I um I, I I have no regrets. I left everything on the field. Um, every week I went out and trained and, and studied the way and prepare the way you're supposed to prepare. Yeah. And um, I have no regrets, man. So I, I happily walked away. I was I was already in businesses and things like that. And, and um, so it was an easy transition for me than it, than it, than it is for, for some people. So let's put, let's compound this on two different sort of levels here. The first being <laughs> about a month ago, it was Andrew Luck suddenly retiring. And right. out of nowhere... Uh, steps away. It caught a lot of people off guard. It even, for, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people had a lot of strong reactions. Some that weren't so positive uh, in criticizing this guy. I mean, he got booed as he's walking off the field after the news broke that he mm-hmm. decided to retire. But you listen to his press conference, and you could you could see he was mentally checked out. So there's a relation you could relate to that, right? I can definitely relate. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility that goes along with. Uh, being a, a quarterback in the NFL, and especially one that was so highly touted as as him, you know, number one overall pick, uh, he just signed a, a huge deal. Was it last year or the year before? Yeah, a few years and, back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you know, and and for him not to be able to be on the field and perform, that's a lot of pressure, you know. And and when you're in the, when you're trying everything in your power to get on the football field to stay healthy, and it's always seem like. You get healthy, then something else happens. You get healthy, then something else happens. And people don't understand. When people see you, when fans see you, they just see you on Sundays. They see you in your uniform, you're going out, uh, making plays or whatever. But they don't see what it takes, what you have to go through from from Sunday to Sunday just to get on the football field, you know. Yeah. And um, I can relate to them. You know, you got to you gotta listen to your body. I'm, uh, Terrell Lawrence told me one time, he said, try it. Your mind and your body is at war. One mm. of them gonna win. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Yeah, he said one of them gonna win. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, on the other side of this spectrum, where I was going, is a dude who's forty-two years old, still on top of his game. Maybe the the best quarterback, maybe the best player, but certainly the best quarterback. And he's in that conversation. People can debate with Tom Brady. And you played against him in the Super Bowl. And this is. Years ago. In fact, right. Tom Brady and you were born in the same year and you've been out of the yeah. league 10 years and he's yeah. still a quarterback. Yeah. So does that just blow your mind that he's able to kind of conquer this father time, not just playing, but being at the top of his game still at this at this stage of his career? Yeah, it, I mean, it does. Now, if there's any position where you can play that long, it's the quarterback position. Yeah. Uh, maybe a backup left tackle. You know, a, a deep snapper, a kicker. you know, things, kicker, kicker, like, <laughs> but so, um, and then if you take care of your body, it, you know, it, um, you know, you can play that long and you can play at a high level. And obviously Tom is one of the greatest of all time. Um, he's had, he has a great, um, uh, head coach, in my opinion, yeah. best, best head coach of all time, one of the best. So he's a great system. So, um, you know, it's, it's worked out well for him. He's, he's obviously, done an outstanding job of taking care of his body, you know. And, but the uh, mental part, Jeremiah, 20 years in the NFL, mentally getting up to, to have to go through, because I'm guessing quarterback, much like the position you played at linebacker, 
you have to know everything about everything, right? And you're the right. sort of leader. Right. So there's a mental capacity there that you have to kind of get up for every single year. Yeah, especially when you when you won six Super Bowls, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just finding ways to motivate yourself. So that, that shows the mental toughness that, that he has and shows the mental toughness of the football team, the head coach. And, um, you know, he had a goal set in mind um, for a long time. Like, you know, when you watch his interviews, talks about how long he wants to play and he's took, he's taken the proper steps in order to ensure that his body holds up for that period of time. And he's still being productive. He's still one of the top quarterbacks in the league, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think as long as he's productive and his body holds up, he'll continue to play. Yeah. He never, he never has taken that really solid, crazy hit. That's, you know, knocked him out. I can't remember ever hearing about a concussion, with Tom Brady in all the years that he's quarterback. But I wonder, because I remember when Favre was near the end of his career in that 2009 season, your last one, he had a great year. And then 2010, he never missed a game, never missed a game, never missed a game. And then suddenly he hit 40 years old. He took one hit and that was it. And so yeah. I guess you're always one hit away, but it's just been incredible to watch what Brady's been able to do. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's obviously he's a smart quarterback. So when you're a smart quarterback, and you prepare the way you're supposed to prepare, uh, great accuracy, um, like great coaching staff. He gets rid of the ball quick, you know. And when you when you make uh, good, smart, decisive decisions, um, it cut that it cuts down on injuries, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he's been able to do that over the course of his career, and which has helped him uh, stay as healthy as he's been. I think he only missed one season. Um, yeah, 2008. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's crazy. Jeremiah Trotter is our guest here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. We intersect sports with faith, Jeremiah, and you and I, I think, connected as well, not just about sports, but having a, a common faith in the Lord. So let's look back a bit and talk about your testimony and your faith in Christ. Where did that start? Where did that walk with the Lord begin for you? Well, I started at a young age. Um, I grew up in the church. We was one of those families, you know, I grew up in a small town. We went to church. Three times a week. Three times. Um, three times a week, man. Tuesdays, <laughs> Thursdays, and Sundays. You were loving that and, as a kid, weren't you? <laughs> oh, man. You know, and I, I played the drums in the choir. Okay. Sung in the choir. And um, I just had those parents. That's the reason I didn't play football at an early age. I didn't start playing football until I was a freshman in high school. Okay. And at an early age, um, I was always one of the bigger, faster kids. And, you know, a lot of the people in the community and, the coaches all tried to talk to my dad to, to, for him to allow me to play in junior high, and he didn't allow me to play. He didn't want me to miss church. Um, so it was tough. It was tough, man, watching your friends play football in junior high, seventh, eighth grade. And, you know, but I think everything has a, a purpose. But I, I, it, it just sitting out those two years just gave me more drive and made me love the game that much more. And, um, you know, finally, my dad um, allowed me to play football. You know, he said, um, I don't know what, I don't know why he decided to let me play. I don't know if he had a dream or God just put it on his heart. Yeah. Um, but um, he, he allowed me to play my freshman year, man, and kind of the rest is history. But, you know, from a church standpoint, it, it was instilled in me from an early age, Um about God and trusting God and knowing the Bible, listening to the word, you know, and uh, you see it in your parents, you see their walk, you see their faith. And, you know, we, I come from a poor family, so we didn't have everything, um, you know, but we never went hungry. We always had clothes on our back. You know, we always had a, a roof over our head. And um, I'm very thankful for that. And we worked really hard growing up, you know, chopping wood. And that, that was a family business. Mm. And, um, uh, just to see your faith through your parents, you know. And my first time ever having a, a, a really encounter with God, you know, my, a personal encounter with God, I would say it was my junior, you no, know, my senior year. I had rolled my ankle, uh, not rolled, somebody had dove into my ankle. I was fumbling the ball, somebody dove into my ankle, and it was a really, really bad strain. So my junior year, it was kind of off and on. I would play one game. I would miss a game. And just couldn't practice half the time just because my ankle was hurting so bad. So the summer going to my senior year, big year for me, looking forward to it. And when I was training during the summer, I kept feeling 
pain in my lower leg. And I, I couldn't really figure out what was going on. So one day I was at the hospital with my mom. My sister was in there getting surgery on her fingers. She played volleyball in college. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, since we're here, let me get my ankle checked out. I said, it's been bothering me. So they go in and take x-rays. So they take me and my mom after they took the, they brought the x-rays in. They take us in the, like a big conference room and set us down. And she said, listen, I'm sad to hit, let you know that your son has, um, could possibly have a tumor in his ankle. And I'm like, tumor? It was like, yeah. And he was like, um, and he may miss his senior year of football. And man, you're talking about a kid that was crushed, you know. Um, but the one thing I learned from my parents, I learned how to pray. <laughs> and I learned how to go into to that secret closet. And um, so I was in the van. I remember just in the, in the back seat crying and looking out the window. I couldn't wait to get home to go in my room. I get home. I ran into the room. And I remember just, just getting down and praying. I'm not sure how long I was praying. It felt like an hour. And um, <clears throat> the following Sunday, we went to church. When we went to a visiting church, and we had the pastor to pray for me. Got a phone call on Monday. Doctor said, listen, um, we did more uh, testing on, on your ankle, on the x-rays, and it's not a tumor. Uh, when you got hit in your ankle, you had a fracture. And we, when we saw in the x-rays, it bled. Your ankle was bleeding it, like inside, and it turned into bone. That's what we saw on the x-ray. So you don't have to miss your senior, senior year. And man, I remember just just crying and thanking God, you know. But from that from that point on, I never had another problem out of my ankle, and I knew I had some a serious issue. I knew something was wrong with it, you know. But it's ironic that from that point on, it was fine, you know. I never had another issue with it. So that was that was really my first personal encounter with God and and the power of God and and um, you know. So it was it was a uh, it was definitely a test, you know. God knows how to to put you in a position to you know he, he knows how to get your attention. We'll be back to our interview with Jeremiah Trotter in just a second, but want to tell you again about Compassion International, a hope more powerful than poverty. Go to compassion.com slash sports spectrum. That's the website. You'll see a list of children waiting to be released from poverty. And I'm looking at the countries on the website right now. You see Bolivia, Nicaragua, Ghana, Uganda, Bangladesh, Honduras, all over the world, children as young as three or four and as old as their high school years waiting to be released from poverty. And your tax-deductible contribution of just $38 a month connects a child living in poverty with a loving, church-based child sponsorship program. Your support provides medical checkups, nutritious food, health and hygiene training, educational assistance, mentoring, special services like disaster relief and even surgeries. But most importantly, your sponsored child will hear about Jesus Christ and be encouraged to develop a lifelong relationship with God. When you sponsor a child, you'll receive a child's photo, a personal story, and a child sponsorship packet by mail in approximately 10 days. And when these children find out that they've been sponsored, man, the joy that they feel is just indescribable. Consider releasing a child from poverty today through Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. Go to Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, pray about it, and consider releasing a child from poverty today. Now back to our conversation with Jeremiah Trotter, longtime Philadelphia Eagles linebacker here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. I need to ask you, though, as you get this sort of encounter with God and you have this faith instilled in you, the seeds were planted and they were starting to flourish, but you get to the NFL and, uh, you know, Stephen F. Austin isn't exactly a place that produces a ton of NFL players. It does produce <laughs> some and certainly you know, you were one of those guys and had a great career. Third round pick uh, in 1998 to the Eagles, the 72nd pick overall. I'm sure you knew that. Mm-hmm. But when you get to the NFL, not on the field, but off the field, how are you able to acclimate your faith? Did you have an encounter with God in the NFL as well? Because 
the challenges, the temptations, all the things that come with the platform that is the NFL can be daring and can be very difficult to to sort of still live out that faith. So what was that like for you? Um, it wasn't it wasn't tough for me. The transition wasn't tough for me because I lost my dad. I say about a month after I got drafted, hmm. and that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. Yeah, um, the all the hardest thing I ever had to go through. So I, you know, growing up, I was, I, I was, I worked beside my dad every day. You know, chopping wood. That was our family business. So doing whatever that made a good, honest living. And uh, man, I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to take that. You know, it's you know, the person that you that you admire the most. And I came out my junior year, so I left school early. And that was the reason I left school early was to, you know, to help take care of the family. And um, and then that that person is not there. My mom was still there, but my you know, the relationship I had with my dad is, uh, you know, you can't really explain, you can't sure. put into words how, how that meant, how that, that meant for me, you know. And I remember going to practice yep. every day. Just think as a rookie, you know, you leave school early, so there's no going back. This has to work, you know. And I promised my dad when he was, you know, in his last days in the hospital that as long as God can seem to bless me, you know, my mom and the family will be taken care of, you yeah. know. So you make that promise to your dad. And you leave school early, and I remember going to practice. I, I get I get to practice, <clears throat> I get to work at the vet, and I never told the team I lost my dad. And when I get there, I tell them, and they said, "Man, what are you doing here? Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. You have to be home with your family." And I said, "I know, but you know, my dad want me to be here." I said, "I got to be here to, you know, so I can do what it takes to make the team, you know, try to help my family, you know." Yeah, and um, I knew it was going to be tough. I didn't know it was going to be that tough. So I remember going to practice every day, and I was just kind of like a zombie, you know, kind of staring in, the, <clears throat> staring off in the mist or whatever. Every day I would get back to my room and just bury my head in the pillows and cry for hours. Just cry, cry. Yeah. I wasn't praying. I was just crying. I don't know if I was upset at God. I don't know if I. I don't think I was upset. I was just. I just couldn't believe, you know what was going on. It's like you see your dad work that hard to take care of the family. And when God bless someone in the family, they can uh, help him pay the bills, take a lot of pressure off, um, you know, help him have a better life, enjoy life. And now he's not there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you win a lottery and then, you know, you die the next day in your family. <laughs> you know sure. So yeah. it was tough because I really wanted him to enjoy. Now he had opportunity to, to be able to relax and not have to worry about the, the bills for a few, a couple, two or three months because, you know, I had declared I was coming out and, you know, you know, when you're coming out, you get a line of credit and most people was buying cars and jewelry. I was taking money and sending it home to my, to my parents, you know? And I was like, man, he now, I wanted to buy him a new house, a new car. Didn't get to do that. So all of that's going through your head. And then you get behind. I got behind in practice because, you know, my, mentally I wasn't there. Yeah. And, you know, in the NFL, once you get behind, you go take a while to catch up. Especially so, as a rookie, yeah. Especially as a rookie, yeah. I was third round, and I was playing so bad just because, you know, not knowing what to do. Uh, I should have been cut. If I hadn't been a third-round pick, I probably would have got cut Yeah, my, my rookie year. And uh, that was tough. I remember the day they was making cuts, my wife and I was – um, <laughs> was laying on the floor because at the time we didn't we had bought furniture because I went straight to camp, came out of camp. We hadn't had time to go shop for furniture. And we were sleeping on the floor, hmm. and I was like, "Listen, whatever happens, we're not answering the phone." I said, "If they cut me, they're gonna have to drive to New Jersey to cut me," because <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an off day, you know. So, um, thank God I made the team, and uh, my rookie was really tough, man. It was tough, man. I mean, it was it was a bad year, and I tried over the years to just kind of block it out but everything had a purpose man and the one thing i learned from my dad is how to pray and how to work you yeah. know and i just kind of put my nose to the ground uh my rookie year and just work my butt off in practice and um you know every day just continue to get better i remember being on scout team it was 
me, Ike Reese, and Mike Caldwell. We just called ourselves the Red Hornets. So we had on the red scout team jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Hornets. And we t- the Red Hornets. And we took pride in whooping the offenses, but every day. Uh-huh. And I tell my boys this story all the time. And a lot of kids, when I'm, um, you know, talking to kids, I didn't make the Pro Bowl on Sundays. I made the Pro Bowl when I was on the scout team. Yeah. That's why I built. I mean, you got. I had an opportunity to go against NFL starters every day. Reads, um, uh, working on using my hands. Um, coach really helped us out over there, getting us better. And that's when I made the Pro Bowl on scout team. And and um, you know, so I try to tell uh, guys these days, you know, you got to take those those reps serious. Any reps you get, you got to take it serious. So. Now, fortunately, I made it through my rookie year. Yeah, which it was, it was, man, it was, it was a blessing. And I also I had knee injuries. I blew my knee out um, in college, my left knee out in college. So I get to the combine, right? I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit. I get to the combine, yeah. And every doctor's checking my knee, and you see them, they, 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 they smoothing it, and they're looking at each other like with amazement, like, whoa. This- you know, and, you, and I'm I'm laying on the table. And I'm like, you know, I can hear you, right? You know, right. He's like, yo, yo, his knee is loose. Yo, feel this. So he's calling other doctors from other teams. Yo, yeah, yo, yo, feel this. So every team is checking. Yo, it's, it was bad. Every team was checking my knee. And um, after the combine, I blew him away in all the drills. I was the number one person moving up in the combine that year. Yeah. You know, I was coming from a small school. So, you know, man, I blew up. And then all of a sudden, all the teams get the doctor reports. I went from being the number one person moving up to to dropping the fathers, you know. So just because of a past knee injury, but your knee was yeah. clearly fine and recovered. It, it 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 was clearly fine from the standpoint that you know God had control of everything. But from a doctor standpoint, being loose, being loose like it was, they said when I, and when I had surgery in college, the doctor didn't fix it right or something like that. So <clears throat> you know, I didn't have any issues with it in college. But you know how doctors are; they're gonna they're going to always try to protect themselves and stuff. So yeah, um, that was really tough for me. I remember I, ta- I remember taking a trip to a few teams, and I went to Seattle, and the head coach sat me down. He said, listen, we're going to take an inside linebacker, and you're one of the top guys on top of our list. And I asked him, I said, coach, you know, um, am, I, am I good enough to, to get drafted in the first round? He said, listen. He said, you definitely good enough to get drafted the first round. He said, I don't know if your knee is good enough. Hmm. And I was and I was very thankful that he was honest with me. You know, when you hear the guy from people, you know, you can accept it better. I say, okay, I can play the game. Just some things out of my control, you know. Right. So that that really helped me. Um, I forget who was the head coach of Seattle that year. Uh, but uh, that really helped me. I was like, okay, you know, you're doing the right things. Keep working. And th- thankfully, I got drafted in the third round by the Eagles. Eagles took a chance on me. I remember going to the um, to the, to to a visit to the Eagles, and I was laying on the table, I was standing there in front of Dr. Peter DeLuca, um, uh, Ray Rhodes was standing there, some other doctors and trainers, Rick Burkholder, and um, you know, I think Jeffrey asked the doctor, like, "Yo, you know, how's his knee?" And the doctor said, "Listen, he could play one year, he could play ten years. It depends on how you take care of it." You know, and uh, they took a chance on me, man. And, you know, I was I was really excited about that. So now I'm going to fast forward a little bit to um, my rookie year. Yeah. I had I had issues my rookie year. So with my knee, a couple of times it would buckle and kind of, I guess, I don't know if it would slip out or whatever. And they had to put me in a brace. It was swollen up a lot. And I would have to sit out of practice a lot of days because the swelling went down. And then I practiced. And, you know, you in preseason games, you're playing – Defense and special teams, mm. which is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, you know that's one of the hardest things to do to come out to play defense and special teams all at the same time. And you're playing and on that veteran stadium turf, <laughs> which was right. known and, to be notorious, right? <laughs> right, you're like playing on concrete, yes. and you're out of sh- and you're out of shape because you've been missing practice. Right, you know, man, that was oh my goodness. I remember being out there, and I was like dizzy one day. I remember running to the ball one time, and I literally just kind of like fell on the pile. You know, <laughs> it was bad. It, it was bad, man. It was bad. And, um, you know, I made it through. 
you know, God allowed me to make the team, man. And, That's good. You know, um, after, after my, this my second encounter I had with God, mm. my second encounter, I was in the NFL. I had the issues with the knee. So this was after my rookie year. And, um, I went, I went into the room, I went and prayed. So my knee still wasn't feeling right. I went in the room and prayed. And I remember, man, being in there for like an hour and a half. And I was crying. I'm not like talking about like just tears crying. You know how when the stop bubbles and all that, that type you of were crying. Weeping. Man, it was, you were weeping. weeping. I was yeah. weeping. Um, um, and when I came out, I sat at the table and I told my wife, I said, you, I said, God healed my knee. She was like, huh? I said, God, he, I said, God healed my knee. And she gave me one of them answers like, oh, okay, all right, that's good. You know, she, <laughs> I don't know if she really believed me she or anything like that. She was being supportive, like right? <laughs> yeah, she was being, saying the wife some things or whatever. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so Aunt, Ray Rose gets fired. They bring in Andy Reid, right? So I'm in there talking to Rick, and Rick says, you know that brace uh, won't protect you from getting because the brace slowed me down. He said, no, you know that brace won't protect you from getting hurt. It's really just a mental thing. I said, for real? He said, yeah, because I probably never would have came out of the brace considering what I went through my rookie year. So I said, what the heck? I came out of the brace, man, and I was a different person. This My speed and explosion hmm. was to the point where Andy was like, yo, what you been doing? I said, nothing. I just came out of the brace. He was like, wow. You know, and I don't remember a lot of stuff because I took a lot of hits, but it's certain stuff that you just never forget. And um, <clears throat> I just knew God to heal me, man. Yeah. I never had another problem from with that knee from that day to this one. That's awesome. And, and there's yeah. moments, right? I mean, we have those moments in our <clears throat> journeys um, where we remember where we were or ha- remember that encounter. And that's a wonderful moment. Jeremiah, take me through the Eagles locker room. You played there. Eight of your 11 seasons, you played there in a very formative time when they started to have success on a consistent level, really for the first time in their team history from 2000 to about 2004. I mean, it was in the NFC Championship game every year and the Super Bowl berth, the second Super Bowl ever. And obviously we watched the Eagles win a Super Bowl a couple years ago and we saw faith was prominent in that locker room. Guys like Carson Wentz and Nick Foles and just a ton of guys. Zach Ertz, who were outspoken about their faith. And I remember right. talking to a couple guys and even um, a couple team chaplains and people who were around the team during that time. And they said, this all started in the early 2000s with guys like Troy Vincent and Brian Dawkins and Jeremiah Trotter. So take me through this sort of faith <clears throat> that existed in that Eagles locker room during your time there. Yeah, man, we, um, you know, we constantly had Bible study you know, once a week and, and, and chapel on Sundays. And, you know, we would try to take it a step further and you know, guys needed to just to, to talk yeah, or communicate with, with somebody. We try to be there because there's a lot, there's a lot going on in the NFL, you know, guys are, this is a lifelong dream. They're trying to make the team, trying to do what it takes to, to, to make it, you know, and, and there's a lot of emotional issues going on with people, stuff they're dealing with at home or stuff they have, had to deal with growing up and <clears throat> we just wanted to be a, some some teammates that could be there for them to talk to they needed help with anything because you know you're kind of out there by yourself you know you you're away from home you're not around your college friends you're not around your friends you grew up with in in um high school yeah and you kind of you're kind of on foreign territory when you get to the nfl you're trying to fill people out everybody's fighting for for the same jobs so <clears throat> you don't know who to trust, you know, and, um, sure. you know, we, we just tried to be, be there for young guys, man, and, and try to be a team that, that prayed together, uh, studied the word together, it's good fellowship, fellowship together on and off the football field. So, um, you know, Brian Dawkins and Carl Vincent was a huge part of that, you know, and, and I think the Eagles did a great job of, uh, allowing us and giving us the, the time and, and the space and the facilities to, to nurture our spiritual growth. So uh, it, it was it was a group effort all the way around. If there was uh, one Bible verse that could sum up the life of Jeremiah Trotter, you know, a life verse that you have, one that's, that's near and dear to you, what would that mm-hmm. verse be? Hands down, Proverbs 3 and 6. 
and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Mm. I try to I try to apply that, that verse to everything I do from when it comes to raising my kids to business to uh to to my wife, uh to friends, family, any decision, I always run it by God, no matter how small it may be. You know, from the decision of um you know, if it's something around the house, I always try to, even if I don't say it verbally, I say it in my spirit, you know, yeah. all right, God, uh, help me make the right decision, you know, help me, you, you know, just anything I do. And, um, you know, it's, it's been very, been very beneficial, you know, and, and God has always led me in the right direction. Even when I sometimes don't get an answer, um, you know, he allow the thing about God, he's so good. Hmm. He knows we make mistakes. He knows we're going to make mistakes. But he's so good, he has a lot of room for us to make mistakes. So he'll take those mistakes and, and work it out for our good. You know, the Bible talks about <clears throat> what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for our good. So he'll take, he'll take those things and turn it around and allow it to work out. Even if it's not maybe the best decision, you know, he'll allow it to work out though, as though if it was the right decision. Hmm. What was that like to be named to the Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Fame a few years ago? <clears throat> oh, it was amazing, man. It was it was great, especially for my family. I was really mostly excited for um, my family, my boys, and my daughter. Especially my boys, you know, they they love football and just to walk walk out there on that field, have them standing next to me because they was they was uh, really young when I was playing. Yeah. They they remember a little bit, but. They really don't understand, you know, the impact that I was able to be have in the community on the team and for the Eagles. Sure. So for just to have them beside me that day, that meant the most. And then to the fans, <clears throat> um, allow them to see me walk out there, and you know, them have still having a lot of memories of the Axe Man being on the football field and making plays. It was great. Just the the whole ordeal. A lot of my family came up from Texas, and it was huge. I mean, I was a very very great. Uh, grateful for the Philadelphia Eagles and, you know, uh, everything that organization has meant to me and my family and my career uh, down through the years and the fan base, the unwavering support week in and week out. Uh, it really made it all uh, very special. Well, one <clears throat> thing that the Eagles do well, and I just happened to be in the Philadelphia airport a couple of days ago and I was walking through and, you know, they have those stores that have, you know, the magazines and the books and the water and I mean, just everything in there. And there's always Eagle stuff when you walk through the Philadelphia airports, but there was a couple stores that had some jerseys hanging out and you saw a Wentz jersey and you saw a Zach Ertz jersey and you saw a couple of these guys that are current players. And then right next to it was a Dawkins jersey and a Trotter jersey, a 54. And I thought, okay. they really still <clears throat> appreciate and look back to the tradition and the history, even the more recent history of those Eagles teams. I don't know. I think these Eagles teams are really beloved. Don't get me wrong. Certainly when you win mm -hmm. a Super Bowl. And my brother's right. an Eagles fan, so I'm speaking, I guess, through him. But mm -hmm. those early 2000 teams are beloved. Beloved, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they... They, they, and, and just imagine if we'd have, we'd have won a Super Bowl. Oh my God. One, one of those years. Man, it would have, and that's the one thing I regret. You know, I, I know I said earlier I have no regrets, but if the one thing I regret is not being able to close the deal for the fans. Yeah. Man, it was, that was tough, especially myself and Dawg, because we were just talking to him. We really took it tough. And it took me years. I still, I mean, I'm still not over it, you know? Yeah. But, Everything happened for a reason. That's why I was I was so excited when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple years ago, man. Just, just I know what it means to the fans. You hear all the stories of, uh, <laughs> you know, my my my. I wish my dad could have been here to see this, and you yeah. see people crying, and um, and the, the people that I visited, you know, that were, that was on their deathbed, and and saying, you know, I know we're going to win the Super Bowl. I wish I would be here to see it, and this and that, and it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's 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 tough, man. And yeah. uh, the fans deserve the Super Bowl more than anybody, you know. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it was. Um, yeah, it was <clears throat> it was fun to see those guys, you know, and just to see the the love that the fans still have for us. You know, it's a, like I said earlier, it's an unwavering love. So, 
Last couple questions here with you, Trot. Thanks for your time. Um, you get to watch your kids now. You spe- you mentioned your boys, kind mm-hmm. of following your footsteps, especially right. your, your older one, I think, is a junior in high school, you said. He's one of the top recruited yeah. linebackers in the country. What's yeah. that experience been like? You know, watch him kind of follow in your footsteps, especially even playing the same position that you did. Man, it's it's been amazing. I mean, I, I was new to the whole recruiting process, and, I didn't know they start recruiting you that early. He had he had like six offers his freshman after his freshman season. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, and that's then insane. yeah, it's crazy. So you no, know, he's a junior now. He's uh, I think he's up to like twenty five offers, or something like that. I'm not sure, but wow, it, it's um, it's great as a dad because you know you raise your kids and you coach them at, at a young age, and you know what you see in your kids. But it's it's a great feeling. It's gratifying to know that other people see the same thing you see, you know, to confirm, you know, what, what you see. So, um, he's carrying your name too, that older son, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Junior. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I mean, he's done a, I know a lot of times kids, that's a lot of pressure on kids, Sure. but he's been Jeremiah Trotter Jr. His whole life. So he, he knows nothing different. And he's always, he's always been better than me because I had the best dad in the world, but my dad didn't know football. Right. And the things that I've been able to instill in my sons, my boys, from the time they were three years old, I was teaching them stuff at three years old that guys don't learn until they get to the NFL. And I know you're like three years old. How can you teach somebody three years old? So <clears throat> when you when you practice it all day, you can't come. It's tough to come home, go outside, shoot basketball with the kids. So I had to create uh, games where I could sit down and rest. So I used to take all the pillows off the couch, right, and lay them on the floor. And I would hold one pillow up, and I would tell them to run and just dive into the pillow, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So they thought they were just playing playing with Dad, hitting the pillow. But as they're hitting the pillow, I was like, all right, well, keep your head up. <laughs> I said, now I want you to run, and I want you to wrap the bag, wrap the pillow, squeeze it, and then roll. We call that the gator roll. Yep. And as the years went by, I'm teaching them little techniques how to play linebacker. And I would, then I would put a shoe down, maybe like three or four feet away from the pillow. And I said, now run and dive and hit the pillow. So we was kind of imitating, you know, you diving over the line on goal line, hitting the pillow. And they thought they were having fun, but I was teaching them meaningful skills that would help them down the road, you know. And uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, man, it's great just to see your kids doing something that's so close to your heart and seeing them be successful, you know. Um, well, he's not the only namesake that's playing on that team, right? Marvin Harrison's son is also yeah. on the same team as your son, right? Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. He's one of the top receivers in the country also. Um, our quarterback, you know, his dad didn't play in the league. He played in college, but he's one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Wow, that's so, great. So, um, yeah, we got we got two games on ESPN this year. Okay. Playing, playing in Marietta this, this, this week. Um, uh, played in Mar- Marietta. Yeah. So it's 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 exciting time for uh to be a, to be a St. Joe's prep hall. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and you get to be the dad and watching it all, and the coach <clears throat> and our coach as well because you've been through this. Let me ask you this as as we close down here, and this time together has been great, Trot. Thank you again for the for the time. We ask this guest we. We ask this question to all of our guests here on the okay. podcast. What are you learning from God today? So where you are now, 42 years old, dad, you know, husband, 10 years out of the league, which still blows my mind. But today, what are you learning from God right now? I'm learning that, you know, he got me. He got me no matter what. He's, he's the one person that you can put 100% trust in. Mm. You know, when the Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsaken you, you 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 gotta believe it. I mean, I I I, I go I, you know, sometimes because you still go through trials and tribulations even though you're not playing football. Sure. And I always look back. You know, uh, the Bible talks about uh, when you're going through those tribulations, think back on those past victories. You know, and that'll help you carry through those tough times. So I always think back, and I try to pinpoint a time where God let where God forsaken me. Right. And I couldn't and I and I can never pinpoint not one time. Now there's been times where it felt like it was close call. Because <laughs> sure, sure. you know, God and time, you know, God time is not not particularly uh, lined up with, with our time, you know. Of course. But 
when you when you look back, it's always right on time, you know. But when you're in that fire, when you're in that fire and you're feeling that heat, man, you're not thinking about all you know. All you want to know is when I'm getting out of this heat, yeah. you know. And um, but just just teaching me, uh, he just constantly strengthening my faith. Every obstacle, every trial or tribulation I go through, it strengthened me for the next trial and tribulation. And when you go through some of the things that I've been through, man, my faith is so strong. I know no matter what, God is going to work things out. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to go through some some pain, some situations. But I know at the end of the day, it's like going into a boxing match. You know going in, at the, at, when the final bell rings, you're going to win the fight. You know you're going to win, but you're going to take some hits through those rounds. Yeah. You know, you do those championship rounds. You're going to have to suck it up. You're going to have to make good decisions, and your corner's going to have to patch you up. But you know that you're going to win the fight. I mean, it's like a cheat code. But, you know, you just <laughs> it's like a cheat code. But yeah. you just know you got to get through those those tough times. And if you can endure through those tough times, God's going to work everything out in the end. So That's good. Uh, yep. Jeremiah Trotter, thanks so much for being here on the on the show on the podcast. Great to catch up with you. Hope to see you again soon, maybe in person. Give you a big hug and just appreciate right. you sharing your story here on the show. Thanks so much. Hey, Jason, I appreciate you, man. Uh, continue to allow God to use you, man. You're doing an outstanding job. Thanks. Great stuff there from Jeremiah Trotter, four time Pro Bowler, two time All Pro, and a member of the Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Fame. Number 54, the Axe Man, Jeremiah Trotter. Great stuff there from Trot. Appreciate him being here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Give him a follow over on Twitter. You'll see his name there. Just search Jeremiah Trotter, and it mentions right on his, his handle there, Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. A great life verse and a great dude. Thanks to Jeremiah Trotter for being here on Sports Spectrum. Thanks to Trot, and thanks to you for listening. We really do appreciate you taking time to check out the podcast. Click that subscribe button on whatever app you're listening to this podcast on so you never miss an episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast. And check out our website as well, sportsspectrum.com. We told you about it, sportsspectrum.com. It's revamped. It's got articles all day long on the intersection of sports and faith. It's got a daily devotional that starts your day off at 6 a.m. Eastern. And it's also got every single podcast that we have done here at Sports Spectrum. So check it out, the website, sportsspectrum.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow with a brand new episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. Have a great rest of your day.